preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.
What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and it's time for new release Saturday here today as I take a look at the Netflix original film, Rob Zombie's The Munsters, starring Jeff Daniel Phillips, Daniel Roebuck, Sherry Moon Zombie, Richard Brake, Jorge Garcia, Catherine Schell, Cassandra Peterson, Dee Wallace, Pat Priest, and Butch Patrick. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, today we're going to take a look at the Netflix original film, Rob Zombie's The Munsters. And as our movie opens, mad scientist Dr. Henry Augustus Wolfgang and his hutchback assistant, Floop, rob graves for body parts in order to build an experimental creation. However, when Floop is tasked with stealing the head of astrophysicist Shelley von Rathbone, he accidentally steals the head of hacky comedian Shecky von Rathbone instead. Now, Wolfgang wanted the head of Shelley due to the fact that he is considered to be the smartest man in the world, whereas Shecky is considered to be a moron. Wolfgang then uses electricity to give life to his creation, which Floop decides to name Herman Munster like the cheese. Seeking revenge on her ex-husband, the Count, Gypsy Zoya Krupp entrances the Count's werewolf son, Lester, who is deeply in debt to Zoya, to come to her tent. Under the threat of losing his head, Lester agrees to Zoya's plan to have the Count sell her his Transylvania castle so that she can turn it into a casino and theme park. Lester tries to call his father with the proposal, but the Count immediately dismisses his deadbeat son's latest scheme. While having breakfast, which is being served by his faithful assistant, Igor, the Count talks with his 150-year-old daughter, Lily, about her unsatisfying love life and disappointing recent date with Count Orlock. Lily and her dad then watch the television show Good Morning Transylvania with host Ezra Mosher. Now, Ezra's guest is Dr. Henry Augustus Wolfgang who unveils Herman Munster live on the air. Wolfgang is disgusted to discover that Herman is a bumbling brute with a goofy sense of humor when he begins to perform a stand-up comedy routine. However, Lily immediately falls in love with Herman's unusual personality. As Herman begins to become a celebrity, with Floop acting as his manager, Lily goes to see him perform one night with his band, The Punk Rods, at Zoya's nightclub, Zombie Agogo. Herman immediately falls for Lily when they meet backstage, and the two of them agree to a dinner date the following night at the Count's castle. Now, the Count takes an instant disliking to Herman due to his dim-wittedness. But after Herman and Lily take their date outside, the Count begins to scheme with Igor how to get rid of Herman. However, when the Count tries to conjure a new mate for Lily, his potion inadvertently summons a semi-sentient chimpanzee instead. A week of dating culminates in Herman and Lily vacationing at Devil's Island Penal Colony where Herman proposes marriage and Lily accepts, which, of course, 
greatly frustrates her disapproving father. Herman meets Lester for the first time at his wedding, and with Herman as the new head of household, Lester manipulates him into signing over the deed to the castle to Zoya by promising a lucrative business venture. Following their marriage ceremony, Herman and Lily honeymoon in Paris. On the trip, Herman captures a creature that had been haunting the city's sewers. Herman and Lily adopt the monster as a pet, who they name Spot. After Zoya serves the Count with an eviction notice, he angrily confronts Herman. Lily just rolls her eyes when she learns that Herman has fallen for one of Lester's schemes, leaving all of them without a home. While watching TV personality Zombo, Herman gets the idea that they can get a fresh start by moving to Hollywood, where Herman can become a famous star. The Count transforms Igor into a bat so that he can join them on the trip to California. Upon their arrival in California, realtor Barbara Carr takes Herman, Lily, and the Count on a brief tour of Hollywood before taking them to Mockingbird Heights. Barbara tries to show the Munsters a model home, but instead the trio insists on buying a dilapidated old house at the address 1313. That evening, Herman, Lily, and the Count join their neighbors for a Halloween block party. Unaware of the holiday's customs, the Munsters assume that they are partying with other freaks and weirdos, while the residents assume that the Munsters are just wearing costumes and award them a $1,500 contest prize. When Herman leaves the house for his first day of work, carrying corpses at the Gateman, Goodberry, and Graves funeral parlor, he gets his first look at Mockingbird Heights outside of Halloween. And Herman retreats in shock when he discovers that they now live amongst normal people in an idyllic suburb. Lily and the Count are equally horrified as Lester arrives at the new house unexpectedly. Although the Munsters are initially unhappy to see him, Lester presents Herman with a check for his portion of gambling money that Lester won in Las Vegas, using Zoya's payment for the Count's castle. Herman and the Munsters excitedly realize that they are now rich, as our movie comes to its close. Honest to God, I've never been a huge fan of Rob Zombie's movies before. I will definitely get way more in depth with his version of Halloween and Halloween 2 when we get there later this month. But just overall, I've never been too impressed with his films. This one I enjoyed. And I'm going to tell you why. And a lot of it has to do to a good friend of mine, Danielle, Jeff and I call her Dee Dee, who had watched this before I saw it and posted her own thoughts on it. And yeah, it basically gave it a little bit of a spoiler to me. But by having just that little bit of knowledge going in, I think I was able to appreciate it more than if I hadn't had that knowledge. Basically, her post that I had seen prior to seeing it informed me that this was a prequel of sorts. It was how Herman and Lily met. That's why there's no Marilyn. That's why there's no Eddie. And it's just Herman, Lily, and the Count, Grandpa. Knowing that made it a lot easier for me. And then reading her takes on people, how Daniel Roebuck, spot on for the Count, Grandpa Munster. Nailed it. Jeff Daniel Phillips, he tried. You know, I'm not going to go as far as to be sarcastic and give the Bart Simpson cake, at least you tried. But you're trying to step into a role 
that Fred Gwynn originated based off of a parody of characters that were made famous by guys like Karloff and Cheney. Okay, you got a long, rough road ahead of you. Jeff Daniel Phillips tried, and I think he did decent as Herman. Sherry Moon Zombie. Sherry Moon Zombie was Sherry Moon Zombie. It was the most tolerable I've ever found her in a movie. But that's not saying much. Okay, because normally I can't stand her. So the fact that I could actually tolerate her says a lot about this movie. But I think the fact that they actually went the prequel route with this and kind of set up how we got to the series that everybody knows and loves and adores and didn't want to see Rob Zombie mess with, I thought was a good touch. Because you basically had the mad scientist, Dr. Henry, not Frankenstein, Augustus Wolfgang, and his hunchback assistant, not Fritz, Floop, grave robbing, building a Frankenstein-esque body, a la Herman, setting up everything. So we're, we're constructing Herman. Herman is just coming to life. You know, and then you see his unveiling. You see Lily fall in love. You see Herman fall in love. You see them go to Paris and get Spot, the dragon who lives under the stairs in the TV show. We see that the Count has a son who's a werewolf, which explains how Herman and Lily can have a werewolf son. There's a lot of stuff here that really helped further explain the the TV series and how we get to that point. How we go from Transylvania to Mockingbird Heights and 1313 Mockingbird Lane. And the fact that Cassandra Peterson, Elvira, is the real estate agent that sells them the house. You know, a great touch. Pat Priest and Butch Patrick, Marilyn and Eddie, respectively, from the TV series, have cameos. Great touches all around. You know, I really was set to go in here and be, no, I'm not going to like this. This movie is going to suck. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, is it a five-star movie? Absolutely not. You know, it is it is what it is. I am going to give this, though, and some people may find that this is generous, but I wholeheartedly sincerely enjoyed this film i'm gonna give rob zombies the monsters three and a half out of five stars you want to debate me on it you want to converse with me about it if you're watching the premiere leave your thoughts and comments over here if you're watching on demand later in the day leave your thoughts and comments down here let's have that conversation let's have that communication that debate that back and forth between host and fan viewer because I'm curious to know what you guys thought of Rob Zombie's take of the Munsters. And make sure you tune in at the top of the hour, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, as well as the Jeff Meacham Network, and across the Jeff Meacham Network multiverse of media, as we present our coverage of Extreme Rules, predictions, commentary, reactions, all beginning at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 Eastern, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, the Jeff Meacham Network, Simple Man Studios, Jay Hebert Studios, the whole nine. It's going to be all across the board. And then immediately following, we're going to have open mic night again, where myself, James Hebert, Noah Foster, possibly Jeff Meacham, if we can wrangle him away from the House of Mouse for a couple of moments, maybe Stat Boy, Maybe Big Baller G or Josh Mansfield. Who knows who's going to come up to the podium and discuss the current state of professional wrestling. Damn it. But I digress.
and then tomorrow right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, it'll be another edition of the War Zone. That's right, it's time for another episode of the Weekly Acquisition Report where I, the Renegade, will be showing you, the viewers, my latest finds from Salvation Army Thrift Stores. And then immediately following that, it'll be the Adams Family. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They are all together ooky. The Adams Family. Raul, Julia, Angelica, Houston, Christopher Lloyd, Christina Ricci, you name it, all of them here. And I'm going to be discussing the other crazy 60s television monster family, the Adams Family. You're not going to want to miss out on any of that content, both right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, as well as over on the Jeff Meacham Network and across the Jeff Meacham Network multiverse of media. Extreme Rules, Open Mic Night, Warzone, Adams Family, you name it. It's all coming to a YouTube screen near you. TikTok, TikTok. To all my loyal fans and viewers, thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on. That way you don't miss out when a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. Nor do you miss out when we go live right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, as will be the case at the top of the hour for Extreme Rules. Make sure you share this video with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie lovers, cinephiles, fans of the Munsters, fans of Rob Zombie, anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content, this video, this review, share it with them. It's the only way we're going to boost up my visibility in YouTube's algorithms so I can eventually get monetized, begin making some money on this endeavor. It's been a long journey since January 11th last year but I really think we can get there by the end of the year this year. Thank you once again to everyone who tuned in and joined me today. It means more to me than you will ever know. And I will see you guys next time.